Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Today we continue to look at the Jamaica Thoroughbred Horse Men's Foundation fundraising series of events from the 1st to the 5th of February. This initiative is supporting the needs of horsemen and backstretch workers at Caymanis Park. Now on Thursday we heard from the event special guest speaker, the jockey Sean Bridgemahon. Today we welcome in studio three former champion jockeys who boast decorated racing careers, George Hosang, Emilio Rodriguez, and Charlie Hussey. Hussey. Gentlemen, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great to have you all, all here. Um, George was a champion yeah. jockey from in the 70s. Rodriguez, a champion jockey from in the 80s. You had a couple of titles in yes, the 70s, 70s, but you were a champion jockey as recent as 2001. Um, um, it was 2005, huh? 2005? I yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but uh, spanning it, out... It was 98. Yes. And then I, I know it was a, a little period after that. Yes. So I don't think it was closest to yeah. one. I think All it was right. five. Yeah, we spoke to Sean Bridgemahon yesterday. Of course, Sean didn't ride in Jamaica. He migrated at the age of 13 and started his riding career overseas. Correct. But we, we spoke about the need to help some of the less fortunate people in the business. Um, Charlie, you are the one that is still stationed here in Jamaica, so you are seeing firsthand the struggles of some of these riders. I go to the track every Thursday morning and sometimes on a race day, and uh, I, I see a lot of old people in the business, grooms and so on, who remember putting Emilio up on a horse. And, <laughs> yes. and, exactly. and, 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 and of course, both Emilio and George were had Fitz Crawford as their apprentice masters. Um, how... How difficult it is, is it for you, Charlie, to see people struggling at the racetrack? Because these are passionate people. Yes. Racing is their life. Yes. Is their life, and they they are struggling. Many of them. Yes, you're perfectly right. I've seen them in the jockeys categories, in the grooms, and um, they're they're working many many years, and they don't have anything to fall back on due to probably not proper saving or education or to do other things while they're at the track. Yes. That is the key. In, in Jamaica, you have to have a supplement income. I think that's, that's where we fall back in teaching and giving these people knowledge that yeah. you have to have a backup plan. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So I, I, I know? I know <clears throat> that you had been based in Florida for some time as mm -hmm. well, Charlie, in the 1980s, but George made his name as a champion rider at Woodbine Twice. Twice. Emilio had spent a lot of time riding in the USA as well. Okay. Um, George and Emilio, let, let me start with George. Is it the same globally? Is it the same in the USA where people on the backstretch and grooms and so on are really struggling and need help? Uh, no, not really. They have a social program that um, at the age of 65, a person who works for at least 10 years, they can get coverage of full coverage of health insurance. That is the law in the, in the United States. And a pension, <clears throat> a, a social security pension, a, a check every month. And a lot of people who live, uh, uh, you know, on the low income level, budget, yeah. on income level the low yeah. budget lifestyle, they can manage. And um, <clears throat> that is what, we, as Charlie was saying, we lack here. They, they, um, when these grooms, they get to the age of, in their 80s, there are grooms here in their 80s. I know. And they don't have that to fall back on. And they're, they can't afford their medication. And that's one of the reasons why we are here. Correct. Um, for the Horsemen Benevolent Foundation, for the needy horsemen, and the, the, horse, the horses that are abandoned, the retired racehorses that are abandoned. Not every owner can afford to take care of their horses or their retired horses or, or get them into uh, the police force or yes. aftercare program. program. Aftercare no. program. So uh, some of them, they really fall by the wayside and they're abused. We, we see them abused and abandoned on the roadside sometimes. There, that's, where there we come, a, that's where we are coming know, in now. Yeah. To, um, Starving in a pen. And yeah, that's where we are coming in now. I'm um, trying to see if we can save the, this program and do something towards um, the, the, the grooms, <laughs> the old grooms, and even some of the trainers too. Yes. You know, unfortunate trainers who, you know, 
they spend their career, their whole life, in horse racing, looking after the horses. <coughs> and unfortunately, they, 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 um, they don't come out on top. It's not everybody going to come out on top of, of the game, you know, like us, you know. Yeah. We, but, um, you know, if we can um, do something for them, you know, I know they will appreciate uh, what, whatever gesture we are trying to do. Yeah. The organizers have told me that ticket sales have been going reasonably well for Monday's fundraising Fun. dinner. And uh, I think over 150 tickets uh, have already been um, sold for, for the fundraising dinner on Monday night. And uh, it's 15,000 Jamaican dollars. And for Correct. horse racing men with IDs, I think $10,000. And I believe that you gentlemen, being a part of this program, Bridge Mahon riding at Caymanus Park on Saturday for the first time, I'm sure you guys will be at racing as well on Saturday, right. it will trigger a lot more interest in Monday's fundraiser mm -hmm. and a lot of um, people now probably embracing the, the, the need to try to help some of the, the, the struggling people that came out as Park Emilio. Yes, we um we we, we, we we you know trying to do a lot of um you know media media coverage, coverage, you know, coverage and yeah. and to see if we can, you know, involve other people, you know, see what we are trying to do and, and come out and try to, you know, help us and support. support, the, right. the, the, support the, that's that's our main objective. Just, just what I said to George when he first brought the idea to him, to me. I said, George, I'm in if Winston and we also have Winston, Winston Griffiths is also Griffiths. with us on board. Between the yes. four of us, yes. we are we are well known in the industry because of our dedication and years of riding, yes. of paying attention to the horses. We we can we can yeah, we, can, we can open some doors. George, George, I, I called George because I, I heard of it. <clears throat> I called George before. Um, and I said, George, what is this is all about? And now we keep in touch with each other all through the years. Yeah. So I called George and asked him, what is this all about? And George, you know, sit down and explain to me and tell me what is it. I said, put me on board. So I told George and said, George, I'm going to call um, the Racing Commission and see if we can get the Racing Commission involved as well. Yeah. So I, I, I did call the Racing Commission and uh, Mr. Metcalf, Mr. Clovis Metcalf, he... He pointed me to Dr. Ramdan, Ramdal, Ramdal. that's the, the, the commission, the commission vet. veterinarian, yeah, Sophia, veterinarian. Sophia. Sophia Ramla. Yeah. Sophia yes. Ramla that, that. Mm. So we all, we get all everybody in trying to get everybody involved yes. uh, in what we are doing. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not like a walking around the back door business. So yes. we're putting everything up front mm -hmm. yes. and make yes. everybody can know what we are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I, we had a meeting this morning with the race, Jamaica Racing Commission. Yes. And it was very, a very, very fruitful. fruitful. Very fruitful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very you know, fruitful. I can't have you three here without getting our viewers to understand a little about what you're doing at the moment. So we've already established the fundraiser on Monday, and we hope it w goes well and makes, makes a you. lot of money. But, um, George and Emilia, let me start with you two who are based overseas. How have you been enjoying retirement? You both had decorated riding careers. And yeah. um, you're not in racing anymore, as far as I know. Um, how are things with life? After retirement, Whitaker, I have three grandchildren yes. that I am hands-on helping my daughter with. They're like eight months, two years, and seven years. And they are more than a handful. Mm -hmm. my, my little siestas I used to take. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that anymore. The, the legal ones are on top of me, and you know, I I love them so much that you know when they're misbehaving, I spoil them anyway. Yeah, the more I spoil grandparents them, are known to do that. Yeah. The more yeah. I spoil them, is the more headache they give me. So. <laughs> That's my life right yeah. now. Yeah, for, for our viewers, George was the forerunner for the Woodbine success that uh, Caribbean riders are having at the moment. After George was champion twice at Woodbine in Canada, we saw Emil Ramsamy come up in the 1990s from TNT, a champion jockey there as well. And then Patrick Husbands from Barbados, eight jockeys titles at Woodbine as well. And, and so, Jana, so, so this Jana man, Jones. George Osang, was... And Jonna Jones yeah. as well. And you have a story about Jonna Jones because you were based at Woodbine some years ago. And when he won the Queen's Plate with Not Bourbon, you strategized his race tactics, didn't you? Yes, I did. 
Talk you to know, us about it. Yeah, Donald Jones yeah, was a fine rider. He got yeah, heavy and left the saddle. But yeah, Johnny Jones came to me because we were living in one apartment building. Yes. And Johnny Jones came to me and asked me, Bimbo, read this race form and tell me how to ride this horse here. Yeah. So I took the race form from him and I, I read it and um, I said, Johnny, it's one horse you have to beat. It's a three-year-old called Ginger Brew. That is, um, Stranach horse was training by, um, I don't remember the trainer name. But um, I said, this is the only horse. Don't think about no other horse. This horse can lead, but don't lead with this horse. Sit about fourth, fifth, and save your horse yes. until you um, come in this, leaving the, the, the two and a half for long. You slingshot this horse here. Give him two, three lick, change your whip, <laughs> and wait till Ginger Brew come because she's coming. Yeah. And, and he rode the house exactly what I, I told him. Yeah. And he won. <laughs> By a short end. George wants to say something. No, I'm just saying he instructed that rider like he already seen the replay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually spoke to John Jones after he won that race. And yeah. he was the one that told me that yeah. you had given him tactics as to how to, to ride the horse. Yeah, now, now Charlie, you rode the 1985 Kentucky Derby winner, Spend a Buck. Right. As a, as a two-year-old... 84, in, in, Kentucky Derby winner. Yeah, 84. spend a buck, 84. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, you rode that horse as a two-year-old. Yes. Talk to us about your yes. career in Florida, because you had a lot of successes yes. at Cayman Spark, but you had some good times in Florida as well, didn't you? Yes, yes. I was always in the top ten, you know. Mm -hmm. And my big, biggest success was spend a buck. Yeah. Obviously, he went on to win the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. But I started, I, I broke his maiden. I was... Pardoning with him from he came to the track as a two-year-old because the train at the time yeah. Cam Gamble He didn't know anything about training. This is his first horse yeah. I was riding for his friend um, Eddie please a senior and Eddie came to me and said hey Charlie help up my paisano He don't know nothing. Yes. It's the first horse. I said no brother. I'll take care. Yes. and as the story went first race we ran he won and then um, he, he ran one another race at Caller and the trainer, without, because he didn't have the experience, he put him in a, in a stake race after he broke his maiden yes. and came up against a champion two-year-old at the time named Smile, yes. which had, had already won a couple stake races, like three stake races, which way out is his league, anyhow. Ran second, trainer decided, wow, we're going to go to Ohio in 100,000, 130,000 Ohio's uh, Cradle Stakes. Yes. Oh, way out of his league again. That is where we realized this is a big horse. He won that race by 18 lengths. Wow. On the bit. Yeah. And I told the trainer and the owner, this is a, a Kentucky Derby horse. This horse, first time around two turns, yeah. never even worked six for yeah. and ran like that. Yeah. I said, this a is champion, a champion, champion horse. Um, George, when we had the triple champions um, function some oh, yeah. years ago, honoring you and Emilio and, and Winston. Yes. Sandy Hawley, the most celebrated jockey in the history oh, of Canadian yes. racing, spoke glowingly about you and suggested that of all the riders that he faced in his entire career, this George Hosang was the most problematic. Yes. Uh, uh, we did some battles back there at Woodbine, and, you know, I, I won, I, as I can remember, the ones that we did wind up battling down the stretch, I won more times than he did. <laughs> he did. Yes. Well, well. So uh, he, I got his attention <laughs> there. <laughs> but he had a home ground on me. Yes, I know. Yeah. When I went to Canada, to Woodbine yeah. the first year, they used to have entries, and every horse that is entered says, no boy riding the horse. No boy meaning no rider. And then Sandy Harley and his agent would sit and get the race for him and pick the best rides. Yeah, so and then and everybody else had to struggle, struggle for the, other for horses the race. Yes. Yes. So he was like, you know, he, he owned the back stretch. Yes. So the fact that you could become champion jockey at yeah. Woodbine within two or three years of arriving there is, was a tremendous yes. story. Yes. George yes. Sang, you will always be celebrated as a tremendous uh, riding talent out of the Caribbean. Charlie Hussey and Emilia Rodriguez, great to have you on as well. Yes. Uh, all iconic jockeys coming out of Jamaica. Um, we thank you for your careers because I can tell you as a, as a youngster growing up, all three of you 
were, were, were riders that impressed me and made me fall in love with horse racing, I especially that we, one there, yeah, yeah, thank you. Emilio yeah, yeah, Rodriguez. Yeah, you, you know that, Bimbo. I know that. Yeah. I know oh, that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay gentlemen, thank right, you very much. Right. And I'll see you on Monday night because okay. we expect that this will be a fundraiser that will gather a lot of funds and, and money to help some of the needy people involved in horse racing at Caymanus Park in Jamaica. Back with more on the Sports Back Zone after this.